Excuse me, sir. We're here. What is it, man? Make sense. We have to start somewhere. Yeah, the magic circle. Good morning. Good morning. I trust you've got a good reason for dragging me halfway across Paris in the cold grey light of dawn. It's only taken you three hours. If you'd hurried a bit, you might have been in time for lunch. Thank you. I've just had breakfast. I haven't been to bed since yesterday. My, my, we are being liverish. You must have my recipe. A glass of hot port, a raw egg and a twist of lemon just before bed. It works miracles. I don't have that kind of a problem, Jason. You surprise me. You're quite finished, Doctor. Quite. Oh, alas, poor Yorick. Do we know him, Horatio? Byron Blaine, diplomatic type. There's a crash priority on this. I'm not surprised. Any ideas? Well, he's probably on Annabelle's recipe. Jason, we are just a little bit pushed on this one. Well, if somebody can be lurking about who can produce this first thing in the morning, it will be more than pushed. Are you sure that this is his skeleton? Well, according to the report, everything fits. Height, skull, teeth. Oh, and the driver insists that he never left the car. Well, that harrows it down a bit. Stuart, Sir Curtis is arriving this evening. He wants you to meet him at the Gare de Leon at 6.30. They must be urgent. I look after the ubiquitous Mr. Blaine. I have the afternoon free. If I just take a shower, I might even make the 1.30 flight. I was going to see the driver this afternoon. Might save you the trouble. Has he been checked out? Yes, he's a ministry chauffeur. He's just as baffled as the rest of us. Baffled? Are we baffled? Well, at the moment, all we have is a skeleton. It's not telling us very much. Well, ask it how old it is. You might be pleasantly surprised to see you in London. Jason, we already know Byron Blaine's age. But if the skeleton is a little older, say, a hundred years or so, bye-bye. He's right, you know. Spectroscopic analysis. At least it'll tell us whether Blaine is missing or dead. Well, why didn't London think of that? Why didn't we?
pity it's going to rain. Thanks very much. Is this the car you usually drive? Yes, that's right. Why, who are you? Oh, look, I've been with police and security for two days. I don't know what happened. Happened? Oh, you mean about Blaine's disappearance? Look, I think there must be something wrong with you lot. I've been over this a hundred times. I'm sure a hundred and one wouldn't be too much of a strain. You left at uh, 10.30? That's right. How was old Byron? Talkative? Well, he said, good morning, Eldon. That was it. Until you got to Marlingdale. Yeah. Well, there was the odd word. But when you stopped off for lunch... Yes, that's right, but there was nothing unusual, nothing. Where, Where did you stop? Uh, the Nags Head at Wittering. It was one of his favourite places. Oh, yes. How long was lunch? Oh, no, only about an hour. We had to be at Marlingdale by three. Oh, yes, of course. What did you have for lunch, Mr. Eldon? Me? I had a beer and sandwiches. What kind of sandwiches? Ham! Oh, look here, I've been over this time and time again. When he, when he left the Nags Head, he was perfectly all right. He was sat in the back there reading his newspaper. I see, and that's the only place you stopped. Oh, yes, the only place. I... Oh, look here, I haven't slept for about two days trying to work out what happened back there. But I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't like to see a sight like that again. Never. I hope you never do. You sure you didn't stop off anywhere else for petrol or... No. No, I said I didn't. Your superintendent? Depends where you found it. Well, don't let's be coy about it. The special branch used them. I just want to know if it's one of yours. No, we use the short-range jobs. That's quite powerful. It would have to be connected to a battery of some sort. Yes, it was. How often do you go over the ministry cars? You still haven't told me where you found it. Next to a ferry at the bottom of my garden. The VIP cars are checked when they go in for service. If there's a classified run, they have to go through a detector screen first. How about Blaine's car? Not a chance. His car would have been screened and searched that morning. We've already cleared the driver. So I gather. Nevertheless, that's precisely where I did find it, less than an hour ago. But that's impossible. Oh, Jeffrey, are you accusing me of prevaricating? <laughs> Mr. King, even if it had escaped the screening, my men went over that car inch by inch after the business with Blaine. Well, then it must have been put there later. Why? How about Eldon? driver what about him is he still under surveillance no i told you he's been cleared besides he's been with the ministry for years well someone's interested in him This is 6.30 train from Geneva. Oui, monsieur. Thank you. Excuse me. Stuart. Oui, monsieur. Would you open this compartment, please? Monsieur? Yes, I just knocked. There's no answer. Would you open it, please? So 
Sir Curtis? Thanks. It's useless. There's got to be some connection. Skeletons. One on a train from Geneva, the other a thousand miles away on the back seat of a Rolls Royce. But why? And how? You know, according to Auntie, it is possible to develop a weapon that destroys human tissue. That's a pretty fancy weapon when a bullet would do the job just as well. That's an assumption not based on fact. Well, your computer is producing facts not based on logic. According to all the available data, the skeleton is Sir Curtis Soretzi. Deduction? Sir Curtis is deceased. Well? I think it's time we got a new computer. Any day now, Auntie will come up with messages which begin once upon a time. Jealous? Livid. You get the news in London? Yes, special branch rather peeve, and I gather you're going to get a little rocket from the Foreign Office. Great. Now all we need is a memo from little old Lichtenstein and we'll have scooped the pool. <laughs> what about Blaine Chopper? Did you remember anything? Ask him yourself. When? Sometime last night. He was found in the car this morning, or rather, Yorick's twin was. So you agree with Stuart? You don't believe they are dead? Oh, well, someone's going through a great deal of trouble to make us think so. How about the analysis on Blaine's bones? Hopeless. They've been dosed with x-rays. The spectrograph showed us nothing. They are efficient, aren't they? Well, why remove the driver? Now, that's a good question. Apparently, he told me a great deal more than he was supposed to. What? what? I have the faintest idea. By the way, how's Auntie's arithmetic? Mine's impossible. Reasonable? Impeccable. I wondered if you'd ask her to be very kind and work out a little equation for me. I want to know the distance between Whitehall in London and Marlingdale in Cheshire, divided by nine, subtract the balance from diddly 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 sixteen, and add diddly 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 one point five. Marlingdale, that was... Ah, ah, no prompting. Stuart, we've well, got to try and find out what Curtis was working on. Well, judging from his past performance, he could be involved in any one of a dozen projects, most of them top secret. Yes, but only one involved Byron Blaine. No, we checked out with the British. No dice. Well, then they were cheating. He's with intelligence. He's one of their coordinators. What? Well, why didn't they tell us? Perhaps they don't trust us. I wonder why. The answer is minus 3.4. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad. Now, would you mind deciphering? What? Oh, no, I was just working out if the rolls used by Blaine covered the distance on a full tank of petrol, apparently. Auntie says no. So? Well, Eldon said that he didn't stop for petrol. Then he was lying. Not necessarily. He's not a computer. He may... Well, he may have forgotten. And if he forgot that? Exactly. That's why the sooner we find out what Curtis was working on and how much it involved Blaine. And you? Back to the island. I think I'll be just in time for lunch at a place called the Nag's Head. You'll fit in beautifully. Naturally, but what on earth am I going to wear? Jason, where is the Nag's Head? On the way to Marlingdale from the airport. It's the in place for lunch nowadays, I'm told. One of these days, he's going to stick his neck out too far. I wonder what Jason would look like. Annabelle. Without his moustache. Rather well. We have a reputation for accepting any challenge, sir. Fancy. If I may suggest to start with the smoked trout, mm. and then perhaps some of the salmon mousse. It is very good today, sir. The salmon mousse with the morasher, yes. But I think for the main challenge, something a little more aggressive, the venison d'Artagnan with a Volnay 65. Ah, oh, the venison, sir. That is one of our specialities. Good. I'm sure this is a place a friend of mine is always going on about. There can't be two superb chefs in the country. Oh, indeed not, sir. And you must know him, Mr. Blaine, Byron Blaine. I'm leaving something to do with the ministry or something. Oh, yes, sir. He often takes lunch here. Oh, good. I haven't missed... When was he here last? Uh, well, not for the past few weeks, sir. Really? I swear that he said he was coming here last Tuesday. Ah, oh, Tuesday, yes, of course, sir. I wasn't on duty for lunch that day, sir. Oh, could you find out who was on duty? I just want to make sure. Is it very important, sir? No, not at all. And if the salmon mousse is as good as you say it is, that's for you. Thank you very much, sir.
Thank you. Lomax, what is it? Just for me, sir. The wife. Good shot, sir. Oh, yes, wasn't bad. My service. General Crawley. He's not to be disturbed, sir. I'll tell him you said so. Now, just a moment. What on earth? Sorry about that, General. I... Sullivan, Department is. Don't you people realize this officer's club's out of bounds to all unclassified personnel? Well, that's the reason I came, sir. What? The matter I had to discuss may be classified. This seemed an ideal spot. Well, I'll get on with it. Oh, never mind about Smithers. General, do you know about Sir Curtis Arezzi? Look, Sullivan, or whatever your name is, I said get on with it. Well, I believe he was working on a project which your headquarters knows about. Do you? And what project would that be? If my investigation is going to get anywhere, I have to know what it was. You've no jurisdiction in my command, Sullivan. Neither for that matter did Sir Curtis. But he did have an appointment with you for today. Yes. So did half a dozen other civil servants. I have to know, sir. Then ask his committee in Paris. I'm asking you. You don't even know if there was a project or not. Good day, Sullivan. Of the fellow. Stuart, I've been trying to find you for over an hour. Any news? Well, I'm not sure. How'd you get on with General Crawley? <sighs> not a chance. Well, then listen. I ran a check on all classified messages sent from Soretz's office during the past 48 hours. Anything? Quite a few. They all come under the heading of Operation Ground Shield. Ground Shield? It's some kind of joint operation. Nobody's talking. I wonder. How about Operation Ground Shield, General? I'll see you in my office in one hour. Thank you. Excuse me. Enjoy your lunch, sir. What? Oh, yes, thank you. Excellent. I'm just going to order a large brandy. Would you care to join me? You. Are you fully booked? I don't think so. I hadn't realized you were planning to stay. Oh, I can't resist the thought of dinner here. How nice of you to say so. I'll put you in room number four. In the, in the front? In the front. If I could have your car keys, perhaps I could look after your luggage. It's the Bentley with the uh, Swiss number plates. Thank you. Two large brandies, please, Nick. How very kind. Thank you. Oh, did you convey my compliments to the chef? Of course, sir. Uh, about Mr. Blaine, sir, you were quite right. He did take lunch with us last Tuesday. You spoke to the waiter who served him? Yes, sir. A chap called Lomax. He remembered him very well. Good. Thank you. Peters, number four. Hello, Miss King. Anything I can do for you, please let me know. Thank you. I've signed the register. Ah, splendid. Perhaps you'd care to have a look at your room. Just what I was going to suggest. Sir. It's on the first floor. Thank you. Then perhaps you'd care to join me for another brandy. Yes, indeed. Excuse me, sir. Yes. We've had a service call. A fellow staying here. Some trouble with his Bentley. Oh, yes, that'll be Mr. King. Room number four. Uh, it's okay, sir. I'll go up. Operation Ground Shield. Yes, it's a security matter rather than military, but I can, under the circumstances, reveal Sir Curtis's involvement. As you're probably aware, many of the NATO countries have various independent intelligence agencies operating in Eastern and Western Europe. Operation Ground Shield is designed to prevent the needless and expensive duplication of information. How does that involve Sir Curtis? Apparently the idea originated with one of his committees. He was to act as chairman at a meeting between the British and American heads of intelligence. Where? I don't know. In fact, no one seems to know the meeting will go ahead now that Sir Curtis is unavailable. Byron Blaine was with intelligence. And Marlingdale could be the rendezvous. There's been no official cancellation. No. But the whole idea of revealing the names and locations of agents in the field is pretty frightening. Unless another completely trustworthy chairman is found quickly. How about the American? 
Has he arrived? No, he's, uh, he's scheduled to catch the night flight from New York tomorrow. Thank you, General. A lot of people would like to see that meeting cancelled, Sullivan. Oh, I can believe that. But right now, all we're interested in is a motive for removing Sir Curtis. Good day. Well, it looks as though we have the motive. But not the method. I'm going to New York. If the CIA are sending one of their top people, he might just vanish along the way. We should let Jason know. That's a good idea. Why don't you join him at the nag's head? Okay, and uh, Stuart, don't talk to any strange skeletons. Can I be of any assistance? Yes, I'd like a room, please. I think we can manage there. But just for one night. That's right. Good sign the register. And find your pen. Yeah. Thank you. Room number seven. Oh, that's all right. I can manage. Thank you. You sure? Yes. Up the stairs? First floor. Thank you. Well then, you want some more? Sergeant. Not much we can do tonight, Mr. Kilburn. Good night. Good night. A skeleton, though. He seemed such a nice sort of chap. Never can tell. Get these cranks all over the place these days. Then you're sure it was a practical joke? Of course it was, sir. You said yourself his car was taken for repair. I'll lay ten to one. He picked it up and took off without paying his bill. Well, I suppose I hope you're right, Sergeant. You'll see. Good night, miss. Good night. Sorry it gave you such a nasty turn. It's all right. It's my fault for walking into the wrong room. Nonsense, my dear. I feel the very least we can do is another brandy. Good night, sir. Good night, Sergeant. Very odd business. You said his car was collected? Yes. Sometime after lunch, one of the mechanics came in said he'd had a call. From Mr. King? I mean, did he actually mention his name? No. No, I don't think so. He just said that they'd... They'd come by the Bentley. I do wish the sergeant had checked whether the car is still at the garage. His explanation did make sense. Yes, I suppose so. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better lock up. Mr. Kelvin, uh -huh. I don't suppose you remember the name of the garage? Yes, Vale End, Vale End Garage.
I think we'd forgotten you, did you, Miss Hurst? Taking off in about five minutes, sir. Is there anything you need before then? Ah, oh, no thanks. I'd like a drink later, though. very aggressive. What on earth are you doing here? I was trying to find you. Well, I wish you'd told me. I'd have sat down and waited instead of spending the whole day getting out of my room. How did you manage it? If you can bear to wait, read the book. Uh, Jason, how long before they find you missing? How on earth am I to know? In case you're wondering, the reason behind all this is Operation Ground Shield. It's a plan to exchange information on counter-espionage. Now, is that sufficient motive for introducing made-to-measure skeletons? That's the only motive we've got. Perhaps we may find another. Follow me. After you. Why are your guards? It's all too easy. Yes, they're remarkably competent.
I personally find his use of colour just a little too savage. It's an impression is one would expect a more disciplined approach. I agree, Sir Curtis. You know, we have one in the Tate Gallery and it's really quite brutal. I don't believe it. Where are we? More brandy, gentlemen? Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. Excellent. Excellent. The minister's private stocks. So good for him. It doesn't make sense. That waiter was one of the men who caught me in the garage. Yes, I've got a nutting acquaintance with him myself. What are they up to? Perhaps it's time you found out, Mr. King. A friendly innkeeper. Ah, Mr. King, you may go in and have a nightcap with Sir Etsy and Blaine. But remember, one false word, the slightest attempt to warn them. And I shall pull this trigger. King, dear, dear fellow. I had no idea you'd arrived. Uh, well, I came on, on ahead. Good. Well, I must say they're taking great care of us. But I think I'll feel a little easier with you and Sullivan around as soon as the meeting starts. A meeting? Always a cautious one. Eh? Meet Byron Blaine, the British delegate, Jason King. How do you do? How, how, how do you do? And Charles here was doing a splendid job. You wouldn't realize you were a special branch. You could not be down with a feather. Sit down, join us. We won't have much time to relax as soon as Smith, our American friend, arrives. Oh, I suppose Sullivan is meeting him at the airport? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, we can't afford to lose him. Can we? Anything else, sir? No, thanks. That was excellent. Uh, what time do we get to London? All about half an hour, sir. Thank you. I'm afraid my lighter has just given up on me. Do you have light? Sure. I think I can manage that. Thank you. Excuse me. Yeah? Do you happen to have a light? Why, sure. Thank you, Charles. You can leave now. You obviously don't know, Charles. It isn't duty until the stroke of midnight. I see. Who takes over then? After a nightcap like this, it's usually bed. <laughs> uh, by the way, King, when I briefed you all in Paris, I don't remember I covered the agenda. No, I can't say that I recall it. Aha. Uh -huh. In which case, you will go over it with me tomorrow. We'll wait until Sullivan arrives. And, and this house, you, you're quite sure it's everything you want it to be? You can't possibly doubt the security of Marlingdale. Oh, well, if we can't trust Marlingdale, I mean... <laughs> What can we trust? Absolutely, old chap. Ah, midnight. Time for bed. Yes. Curtis. Blaine. No, Hypnosis. Is that it, Kilvin? Hypnosis! Why not? It's more efficient than drugs, don't you think? Yes, but how did they... Most hypnotic suggestion. Like Cinderella on the stroke of midnight, they simply fade away. Logan, before you start the sleep tapes, make sure you put in a new reference to Mr. King. Uh, saying goodnight, arranging to meet in the morning, that sort of thing. Yes, sir. You really have done quite splendidly, Mr. King. Poor old Siretsu had been getting quite worried about you. They think they're at Marlingdale. Think? My dear fellow, they're quite convinced. They both remember arriving, meeting the minister, talking to security. We even have a conference room. That's an exact copy. So they'll talk and give away the names and locations of all the agents. Exactly. You are about to witness the greatest coup in the history of espionage. Not quite. Your meeting's not even going to get off the ground. If the American doesn't arrive. Wilbur J. Smith, or he'll arrive. 
And when that conference starts, I'm afraid you'll both become redundant. Good night. Mr. Sullivan, I'm afraid we can't hold the passengers on this aircraft. Well, let the rest of them go. But that pair stays. I have no authority. I'll take the responsibility. Department S, Interpol. All right. Now, I think this has gone on long enough. Where is he? I really don't know what you're talking about. Yeah? Well, the last thing I seem to remember is you with a cigarette. Would you mind? Captain, what's down there? That's the cargo hold. Right, well, make sure they don't start to unload now, huh? If he's down there, believe me, I'll find him. All right, he's in a packing case, Mark Penrow Engineering, for collection. Where's he going? We don't know. We were paid to make the switch, that's all. And you weren't part of the deal. Yeah, I can believe it. Special branch. Ah, uh, they're all yours. Smith is down below, in a packing case. He's probably drugged. Right, I'll get the ground crew onto it. No, no, let's do it from here. That way the case can be unloaded and collected as planned. You want us to follow? No. Now, if they spot you, we've lost our only lead. If the case is big enough to carry Wilbur Smith, well, we're about the same size. There's a van coming. It's for the milkman. It's probably from the airport. Jason, we've got to do something. What? The door's locked and guarded, the window's effectively sealed, and we're at least three floors up. What would Mark Kane do? Sit down and relax, and I suggest you do the same. And what good will that do? Well, for one thing, I might be able to get some sleep. Come on, Jan. One, two. Don't know. Have a try. Hey, Arthur. Any trouble at the airport? None. Good. We said a hundred. Any time. You're sure you weren't followed? No chance. Good. Keys. American end has slipped up. Maybe he wasn't even on the plane. Of course he was. So were our so-called specialists. Then why didn't they make the switch? I don't know. Maybe Sullivan's smarter than we thought. Shut the door. 
Because Arezzi and Blaine are going to want to start checking with London if Smith isn't here. I'm more concerned with why he isn't. Look, if Sullivan did stop them on the plane, then he could have known about the crate. And follow? No. Maybe he came with it. Or we'd have spotted him. Would we? All we were concerned with was getting that crate. He could have got out of it on the way here and then left the van while... King and the girl. Watch them. But now we'll handle Sorezzi and Blaine. Okay, where is he? Under the bed. I gather he was one of them. Stuart, how did you get here? Special delivery. They were expecting Wilbur Smith. I found his photograph. I woke up on the plane to find a skeleton. Smith was in the storage home. Yes, that makes it clear. So one thing I don't understand is why they were leaving the skeletons. Well, if you kidnap a man on a plane or a train and he's reported missing, it would be searched. But if it's a skeleton that's found, who'd think of searching for him? And by that time, it would be too late. Yes, but Byron Blaine was travelling in a car, which, which was... Which stopped at the Vale End garage for petrol. That's where that little swap was made. Yes, of course, I see. Well, I'm not sure I do. Would somebody mind telling me what's going on around here? In a moment, I've got some more surprises for you. Another one. What did you have for breakfast? Oh, seems most irregular. If Smith wants a new rendezvous, surely I ought to clarify the position with my ministry. Of course, Mr. Blaine, but it is only 7.30 in the morning. Our information is that the American ambassador called on the Home Secretary an hour ago, and the instructions are that we leave for the new rendezvous immediately. What, without Smith? He's on his way there now. I do apologize about this, Sir Curtis, but we can't possibly risk a breach of security. Quite. It's rather a nuisance, though. How do we leave? From the rear of the building. You've arranged transport, Lemmy. Yes, sir. It'll have to be one of the Q-vans. Mm. Q-van? If the place is under surveillance, we can't possibly risk you being seen, sir. I wondered how I'd get them to leave. Way of doing things. What's wrong with them? They're hypnotized. They think they're at Marlingdale. Good morning, gentlemen. Sullivan. Had no idea you'd arrived. They're very hot on security here. Yes, we're most impressed. Well, does that put you in a bit of a quandary, Kilvin? I wouldn't do anything to jeopardize the situation. Oh, perish the thought. What's he talking about? My little disappearing trick. Watch. Now you see it. Now you... Don't! Back against the wall. Well, let's not be ridiculous. All of you. Thanks, Mr. Blaine. I'll take care of them. Thanks, Mr. I'm back against the wall. I'll call security for you. I think not. Sullivan, explanation, please. You think you're at Marlingdale? Think? How can they think they're hypnotized? Hypnotized? But we arrived here yesterday morning. They're playing for time. Let me call security. Open the doors. If this is Marlingdale, there'll be guards posted outside. Well, Gilbert? It's ridiculous. The grounds are closely guarded. You saw that yourself when you arrived. They thought they saw it. Very well. Look for yourself. It would seem, Mr. King, that you are right. Of course. Yes, it seems a most ingenious plan, but how did you work it all out? Oh, we found a skeleton in the cupboard. 